This is Twit. This one just caught my radar, um, and I'm wondering what you guys think about it. It is. Uh, it concerns a game called Hotline Miami 2, uh, the sequel to Hotline Miami, uh, and it was going to be released in Australia, but Australia has a pretty restrictive local age rating system, and uh, this game includes a fictional rape scene. So the rating board in Australia said, sorry, we're just, we're not gonna rate that one. We're not gonna allow it to be released because I guess uh, their rating system doesn't just apply a rating to a very explicit game. It actually, you know, you have to meet some content guidelines, it sounds like, in order to even earn a rating. Um, so it's not gonna be released there. But the game developer has come out and said, well, don't worry about it, just pirate the game. And uh, even though you can't buy it legally there, go ahead and pirate it. We think you'll have fun playing it. Uh, Ryan, what do you think about that? I mean, if uh, there's two ways to look at that question. If you mean whether that game designer is allowed to let people kind of circumvent the rating board and uh, pirate the game then normally, yes, uh, the IP holder is allowed to create any kind of license he wants. If he says you can steal this game, you can steal this game. The hiccup with that, because a lot of game developers do that, is uh, sometimes these game developers are restricted by other licenses they've agreed to that they don't even realize, or they've agreed to distribution deals where they can't be doing this, but they, it doesn't stop them from offering it. Uh, that said, I, I am not completely familiar with Australia's law, so I don't know if this is how it works in America in the sense that we have the ESRB who rates our video games, but they're not a government body. They're a private kind of organization that we set up. So a government body doesn't get created. We say we'll regulate ourselves in the gaming industry. We don't need Congress. We don't need any of that. Uh, you know, let us do our thing. And so far, so good. If Australia is set up like that, where it's a private entity, then this guy can go around that. No problem. They have no real jurisdiction or, or power there. If it's an actual government agency and their ruling was specifically, you know, we're not going to rate this, we're not going to allow it to be sold here, that's also probably fine what he's doing. But if they have straight up said as a government agency that this game's not allowed to be played here, then he's probably breaking quite a few laws. Uh, again, as I, I, I hadn't looked this much into it because I just, you know, Australia we deal with very rarely, oftentimes because of issues like this, they're, they're a headache to go through in, in every avenue. Uh, and... It's amazing what gets through and what doesn't that this game was blocked and some others have been sold there is, you know, another, I guess, conversation for another time. But it's uh, it's he's probably well within his rights to do that. And you're well within your rights to download it illegally through his sort, you know, however he set that up for them. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. I, it, I, yeah. I agree with you that the, the um, hitch in that, the potential legal hitch in that is whatever distribution or, you know, however else he's licensed out the rights, what other sub licensees uh, there might be or assignees of the rights to the game that might say, whoa, wait a minute. No, you can't pirate our, this game to which we also have rights. Uh, Ross, do you have any other thoughts? Absolutely. Um, it's not just a legal issue. It's also a PR issue and an economic issue. It sounds like if the game was banned in Australia, they weren't going to be able to sell it and get any revenue off it there anyway. So from a PR standpoint, making it available to hackers or uh, to torrenters uh, to illegally download might be a great PR move on their point. They're going to get some street cred from their diehard fan base who wouldn't be able to get the game in Australia. Um, and they're going to get their product out there for great, you know, name brand recognition. At the same time, they're going to run across a lot of regulation issues. Um, I mean, if this is a government body regulating in Australia, which I believe it is, um, there's going to be strings attached to that. And there will probably be some kinds of repercussions that they're going to have to factor into, you know, is this a good idea or is it not? All right. Lauren, any thoughts on this, including uh, why the heck do we need a fictional rape scene in a game? <laughs> Unfair. Uh, <laughs> yes. yes why do we need one indeed um i mean they're also going to have the issue if they wanted to release it in other countries um and they mm -hmm. want to charge for it if they've already made it um free basically i mean they say pirating i assume there's government regulations that they can't just offer the game for free and that's why they use the word pirating the game rather than just download for free um but if they ever want to expand their game to other countries and they have a a decent rating or actually a rating that allows them to release in those countries it'd be interesting to see if they actually make any money off of it because you know 
people who are good at downloading could just find a, an Australian version and adapt it to their version. And I mean, it's a good PR move and maybe the next game they'll actually be able to, you know, get a rating and make money off of it by not including rape. <laughs> right. And and B Swift in IRC is calling me on that question, seeing, saying, why do we need fictional rape scenes in books? Excellent point. Ex exactly. Point and, taken. And that's, <laughs> but, but, but in all seriousness, that's a very good point because that's, I, and I certainly hope I'm not coming off as uh, defending fictional rape here, but it's. Uh, no. <laughs> no I, what, what I wouldn't be good. Is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, Hotline Miami is uh, it's a satirical game. It's set up. It, it's certainly not. You, there's worse in Grand Theft Auto, which is sold everywhere. There's worse in a plethora right. of games sold everywhere. There's worse on Game of Thrones, which is the highest rated show on TV. And yeah, there's mm -hmm. worse in any book you could read probably ever. Uh, it, it's just it, it's a it's a very big double standard when it comes to games. What is, you know, sensationalized into bullet point headlines of, oh, this is a rape game or this is a murder game. You know, it's it's not. It's a. It's, especially in Hotline Miami's case, uh, I actually have not seen a specific scene and I, I normally don't like to comment on things without seeing it, so I'll preface it with that. But right. it's a game created entirely as satire on this kind of Vegas lifestyle and action game kind of feel. It, it uh, It's certainly not what you would immediately think of when you hear rape scene, I'm sure. Right. And uh, it, so that it, you know, it's just an, it's an unfair kind of uh, bullet point there. <laughs> 